Hello guys and welcome to the video. Um, you're very welcome and thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Wayne. I'm a flute and whistle player from Belfast. I was asked to do this video um, just to demonstrate a, a couple of tunes on a tin whistle for you, uh, which I'm very happy and honoured to do so. A um, little bit of background really on myself. Uh, grew up in East Belfast in, in the early 90s. Um, and I, I think I was around about eight or nine. Maybe, maybe a little older, if my memory serves me right. Um, I started sort of, you know, taking interest in, in bands, you know, getting interested in the band scene. So, uh, you know, back then, as a kid, you know, especially where I grew up anyway, it was, uh, you know, you, you grew up either with a, a set of drumsticks or a flute or kicking a ball about. And uh, I had two left feet. So the football game, the question was out of the scene. But uh, yeah, so... You know, I learned how to play the flute, and um, you know, there were a couple, a couple of different bands that you know took me on, and uh, uh, basically just you know, adopted a real sort of interest for you know, um, yeah, for for years and years I've done that. Uh, played in various bands around East Belfast, and learning how to play the the B flat flute, which is this flute here. Uh, now, there are different variations, different variants, sorry, off of this type of flute. Some may call it a fife. Um, or, you know, a military style fife, which technically it is, yes, but uh, yeah, the, the B flat flute is is what I knew uh, it as when I was when I was a kid, and even to this day I would still call it that, even though I know there's there's probably more politically correct names for it. But uh, yeah, the um, the the band scenes what got me interested in music from from a kid, and for years and years I I played in different wee groups, you know, in the round Belfast or different bands, sorry, um, until around. 2004, I moved away and, and uh, moved to London. But uh, even even you know throughout my time in London, I still played music. And um, it was around two 2006. I'd heard a couple of um, a couple of trad Irish bands. You know, it was like the Chieftains and Planksty and stuff. I was sitting in a bar and and, and I'd heard these different sort of you know bands playing. I thought oh, that's that's amazing. But I'd always had a. a you know, I was always very fond of the tin whistle. Just never learned how to play it until later on. Um, the likes of uh, the Pogues. It was the Pogues. It was uh, the Fairy Tale of New York. That was one of the first tunes that I heard and heard the whistle in. I thought, ah, oh, that sounds amazing. I want to be able to do that. But um, you know, I never, never really picked up a whistle or learned how to play it say, until until my you know later years. Um, so as I say, you know that, that that particular flute, you know, this is a standard five key fife. Um, you know, there 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 are different variants of it. This is made out of African blackwood. You will have other flutes that's made out of a, a particular type of metal. Um, in some cases, uh, ebonite. You know, it's like a, a hardened rubber. Um, however, the whistle is made from a, a multitude of different materials as well. So yeah, a little bit of history basically on the on the tin whistle or or the penny whistle. A um, couple of different stories, you know. I've had a few different sources tell me different things. Really, um, I didn't really get into the whole history or the the technicalities, you know, behind it. I just wanted to play the thing. And lucky, I had that advantage from playing in marching bands and you know playing the flute. I had that advantage because it's the same kind of um, you know the tone holds is kind of similar on the flute as it would be on the whistle. So this is a standard sort of tin whistle that you would probably see, you know, in different shops. Um, yeah, uh, this this one's actually in the key of C, and I say this is this was one of my very very first whistles actually that I ever got. Um, it's seen its days. There's a couple of different wee cracks in it here and there and stuff, but uh, still plays well. Um, originally, the the tin whistle I believe was made from from hollow bone, and it was called the fipple flute. Um, but as the name implies, later on it became the Tin Whistle, which was mass produced by Robert Clark in the early 1800s, I believe. Um, many people believe that the, 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 the Tin Whistle, the, the Penny Whistle, was actually called the Penny Whistle because, you know, kids, um, initially it was made as a toy, you know, but uh, kids who was playing it in the street were, were given a penny for playing, um, and also that it cost a penny. You know, so that that's my understanding anyway. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case now because uh, the, you know, tin whistles, penny whistles do cost you know quite a penny, as, as the saying goes, because the range anyway, or anywhere from five pound to around five hundred. Um, 
and over the years I've added up the money that I've spent personally on whistles. I would give myself a scare, so <laughs> I won't do that. Uh, you know, they, they are they are kind of similar, as I say, to that of a, of a B flat flute. You know, in terms of the uh, the tone holes, they both got six holes. You know, so six notes down, six notes up. Sounds a little like this, actually. I'll just give you a little demonstration. So here it is. So this is a whistle in D. This is a standard key, a whistle that you would sort of um you, you would start off with when you when you begin learning. Um, especially so if you want to start going and attending different sessions and open sessions, you know, um, then that's a that's a kind of key that you will need to play a majority of the tunes in. Um, I'll show you a couple of other whistles in a second here in different keys. Um, but uh, yeah, here it is. Here's a little demonstration of how this whistle sounds. I'll play a little jig for you, okay? There you go. That's a little jig called the Monaghan, uh, a very well known tune actually, you know, in the, the traditional music scene. Um, that was one of one of the first tunes that I'd learned many years ago. And uh, who was I heard? I can't remember who it was a play. It might have been Matt Malloy from the Chet. In fact, it was it was Matt Malloy from the Chieftains I'd heard playing um, many moons ago, and uh, it was one of the first jigs that I'd wanted to learn, you know, because it was it was sort of long. It was more, you know. Uh, like a show piece, you know, uh, in my opinion anyway, because it was just it was just a long technical piece to play, you know, like back then before I really sort of got into the uh, knowing, you know, about the different ornamentations and the different sort of uh, styles of playing. Um, yeah, I started off playing playing slower tunes, as, as you do, you know, so uh, I'm going to play another tune here now called Eleanor Plunkett. Um, it was written in the 1600s, I believe, by a Irish composer called Turla O'Carlin. And um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful piece, a real nice piece. So I'll play that for you. And it's slow enough as well that you can actually, you know, if you have an understanding of the whistle or if you have played it before, then, um, you know, it is, it is a tune that you will be familiar with. And of course, you can play along to it as well. OK, so here it is.
There you go. Uh, beautiful wee piece. That one of the very first tunes I'd uh, I learned on the whistle, and um, it's not the sort of tunes that you would hear, you know, uh, generally at sessions and stuff. You know, um, well, the sessions that I go to anyway, or, or, or did do before uh, <laughs> sort of COVID has started affecting our life. Um, it's uh, it was more sort of upbeat stuff. So, but yeah, um, I mean, I I made the crossover really from from marching band, you know, multi style music to traditional and contemporary Irish music is, uh, you know, and as the years have went on, I've sort of adopted a bigger interest for it. You know, I'm still learning myself, and um, it, it's the sort of it's a sort of thing you get into, and there's there's just a multitude, there's thousands and thousands of tunes out there. Um, you know, I I kind of went, uh, you know, I I kind of went the wrong way about it because rather than learning the tunes that mattered, I was trying to go for the more sort of technical show pieces. You know, because I thought, oh, they sound amazing. You know, I want to do that. And you know, rather than learn to, you know, crawl before you can walk. In my case, it was sprinting before you could crawl. Uh, you know, I was trying to get myself in there and, and play the sort of quickest, most frantic, you know, pieces because I thought, oh, they sound amazing, you know, uh, they sound that good to me, I want to learn to do that as well, so I'm going to impress my friends or whatever, but, you know, that's not the case at all, you know, just, you, you need to take it step by step, one step at a time, of course, and, um, you know, gradually you will get there. So, uh, yeah, I mean... I, I'm self-taught as well, you know, um, you know, with, with traditional music as I I didn't have anyone in Belfast or, or, or over in London to teach me. Um, it was only a few, you know, quite a few years ago, sorry, when I started attending sessions um, in Belfast and in the round, more so Glen Avey, um, I went out there where I'd met some fantastic players, you know, they, um, they took me under their wing, more or less, and showed me a lot more about traditional music than I could have learned on my own. You know, the, the different styles, the likes of jigs, reels, you know, horn pipes, and the ornamentation to that actually gives a traditional sound, its sound, if that, if that makes sense, you know. Um, what I'm meaning by ornaments, you know, there, there's certain ornaments that you'll play in tunes. Um, you know, you need to be able to execute them, you know, within the tune to make it sound, you know, uh, traditional to make it sound like a, a, an Irish tune. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick indication here on what I mean there when I say ornaments so you know there's there's a certain piece of music that you would play um I'll play I'll play a reel here actually um I'll I'll, I'll play it as the bare basic so basically the skeleton of the tune um because as soon as you learn that then the tune is open to uh it's open to interpretation and of course you know you, you can sort of play around with it and put your own sort of slides and, and cuts and hits and stuff in you know and just make it unique to yourself of course so yeah, I mentioned there about cuts and hits. So that's basically what I'm gonna what I'm gonna tip on here. Okay, so I'll play a reel here. Um, one of my favorite reels. It's called the Abbey Reel, and um, a good friend of mine now, Alan Dockery from um, you know, he's from down the south there, uh, in Tala. You know, he um, he played in a few different sort of bands. You know, growing up and from listening to one of the albums that he done many years ago, uh. I learned this particular tune off him, you know, and it's stuck with me ever since. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. And it's called the Abbey Reel. So as I say, I'll play it very slow and then I'll play it a bit more up to speed with um with the ornaments and stuff in it. Um whenever whenever I started learning the tunes as well, I always thought they were a bit more um difficult, a bit more, you know, they were a lot quicker than they were, but it, it wasn't, they were just played the same tempo, but just with these, you know, the ornamentation and stuff in there makes it sound a bit more technical and sounds a bit quicker. Um, but I'll show you what I mean. So you have, I'll play the first few notes here anyway, okay? Okay, so that's it played just uh, uh, straight through there, the first part with uh, without any ornaments and stuff in it. So I'll play at the same sort of tempo and put the, the cuts and the rolls and stuff in there, okay?
so that's what you really call the Abbey, and it's it's probably my favourite reel to, to play. Beautiful piece. Um, so yeah, that gives you a, an idea really, and uh, you know, playing traditional music, you know, you basically, in my opinion, you know, you have to break it down if you know if need be, use a metronome or something there, you know, just to to try and keep the the timing. Uh, just break it down phrase by phrase, and, and try not to um, try not to get ahead of yourself and, and rush into things. Um, I'll show you a couple of different whistles here, actually, um, just to give you a better idea uh, on some of the wood and the materials that they're made out of too. Um, this particular whistle here was made by a Michael Burke, um, an American whistle maker. I've had this whistle now for for quite some time, and I think. This was around two hundred and sixty pound or something like you know back whenever I got it years and years ago, and yeah, it, it's done me all this time. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Uh, and then I showed you this whistle earlier on as well. In this one's in C, uh, and that's just your you know your brass sort of generation. You you pick these up from from music shops for about a fiver or something. Um, a couple of wee cracks in it, so it'll be leaking air left, right, and center. But uh. You know, some people do like these particular whistles because they give that sort of, you know, proper Irish whistle sort of feel to it, you know, so, but again, that's personal preference. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of whistles here made by a friend of mine, uh, Roy McManus, and he's based in Belfast. Um, quite a few years ago there, he got into, um, you know, making, making whistles and... Now, you know, the likes of Kevin Crawford, uh, Bren Finnegan, and uh, amongst a few others, play his whistles. A couple of great players there as well, you know. Um, this particular whistle is also, it's in the key of C. I'd asked Roy if he could do me one a few years ago, just, you know, in a different key, because I'd only had, like, D whistles and, you know, other ones that I didn't really play that much. And I just wanted one that I know I was going to keep and going to use. So um yeah, this one here, this is oh, excuse me. This one is made from Liburnum. Um there's a few different types of wood that Roy uses to uh you know turn his whistles and they're they're absolutely brilliant. So I'll give you I'll give you a rough uh, idea on how this sounds too. There you go. Um, a couple of wee hiccups here and there, but uh, no one's perfect now. Uh, yeah, so that one is made from Liburnum, and it's in the KFC. Um, you can find Roy on Facebook as well, um, McManus Whistles. And um, yeah, if if you want, just send him a message, of course, if you're if you're wanting to, you know, look and invest in a new whistle. So this one is made from Mopani, I believe. Um, to be honest with you, I, I, I'd never even heard of some of this wood or the materials that he was making them from, you know, until, until he started doing them. And, um, yeah, sort of looked into it a wee bit more and, yeah, quite quite nice. Uh, this particular whistle, um, nice wee story actually to it. I, uh, it was a complete surprise. Uh, there was a gig that was happening a few years ago down in the Skianos Centre in East Belfast. It was part of the, uh, the Irish Language Week as well. And uh, it was... Uh, Tourist Linda Irvine had asked me to um, uh, play a couple of tunes and stuff, you know. So uh, I did. I was happy enough to go down, play a few tunes, and um, you know, entertain the crowd for a half hour. And um, Roy, he attended. Um, there was a couple of different sort of functions going on there that night as well, and um, Roy attended. And I was looking at some of his whistles and that as well, and he passed me one. Um, yeah, I'd already had one off him before, of course, but it's it's the way he worded it. He says, "I ah, here, try that one. So, of course, I, I just, you know, quick, brief look at it. I started playing a few tunes. He said, ah, it's got your name written all over it. I'm like, ah, it's a nice whistle, you know. Maybe I'll maybe uh, look at getting another one. He says, no, it's, it's got your name written all over it. 
you know, he just kept saying that to me and thinking, you know, why does he keep telling me? He says, it's got your name written all over it. And literally, he'd engraved my name into it. So um, you'll probably not be able to see it there, actually. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was very nice of him. So um, yeah, he engraved my name into the whistle and put a, put a, wee, um, uh, a wee symbol and stuff on there as well. It was, uh, it was very nice. So uh, yeah, this, this is it. This is ND. Okay, I'll play a quick tune on this. So um, yeah, that's another one of Roy's whistles are in D. And then last but not least, this particular whistle is in the key of A. And you know, the, the different the different keys of whistles as well, you don't really need to worry too much about, you know, especially when you're just starting off or um, you know, if you're gonna be playing in sessions, of course, because you know the, the, the main key that you need is is D. Alright. Um if you're doing any sort of like personal, you know, tunes or recordings or anything, you know, then of course you can look into uh, using a different key whistle. This whistle being in the key of A, it's a beautiful, beautiful key. Um, I love it myself. And um, uh, Bran, Bran Finnegan actually plays a lot of uh, tunes on his A whistle too. Uh, this one's made out of Blackwood. And again, it's another one of Roy's. Um, so yeah, I'll play I'll play a slower actually. I can't remember the name of it, but um it's another one I learned from the play and actually of uh Joni Madden. And um yeah, beautiful wee piece. So here it is. There you go guys so that is the uh that is in the key of a um i also just remembered the name of it there now as i was finishing it it's called kala nagrunabana i believe is how you pronounce it i think it's that but uh yeah beautiful tune i learned that from Joni madden so anyway guys thank you very much for tuning in um it's been a, a pleasure to um to be part of the you know part of the event so thank you very much um if there's if there's any questions or anything, you know, don't hesitate to get in touch with the organization here and, you know, they'll pass my details on. Um, I'm not a teacher by any means, but if there's anything I can help with, you know, in terms of answering some questions or giving some tips on the whistle or the flute, um, yeah, of course, just uh, just get in touch with you and we'll, uh, we'll get you sorted, okay? But um, in the meantime, if, if there's anything that you, you just want to find out, there's a, there's a multitude of uh, videos on YouTube. Um, there's a gentleman called Michael Eskin, I believe, and he does a lot of sort of, you know, slower tunes and uh, beginner sort of introductory tunes to the Tim Whistle as well. So, uh, yeah, check them out. Um, but yeah, until next time, guys, thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe. All the best. Bye bye.